What's up everybody and welcome to another episode of Reviewed. Today we're going to be taking a look at Metal Phone from Kaylin Morelli and Joe Miranda. Dude, I'm going to tell you, this is a mind-blowing gimmick. No joke. Unreal. Unreal. Kaylin Morelli and Joe Miranda are geniuses. Dude, absolutely no joke. I really, I'm impressed by this whole thing. Metal Phone is a state-of-the-art gimmick that allows the performer to create a reality-shattering moment using either a borrowed bill or a credit card and what appears to be a normal phone. One of the coolest things about it is it's so much more than just a traditional magic trick. It's actually a piece of art that you'll be proud to use and own. Dude, this it, it is built like a brick. extremely well. Like, it's literally like a brick. Yeah. It is... Stainless steel, super high quality. It's precision. I mean, it, it literally blew me away yeah. when I opened it up. Dude, no doubt. I think the cool thing about it too, the attention to detail that they really use for this. Like at first when I saw it, it reminded me very much of like a milled aluminum just because of the detail and the texturing that they added to it. More so than just being like, up oh, here's a chopped block of, uh, of metal. You know, they really put yeah. a lot of thought into not only how it would look, but how the gimmick would perform across the board. I think one of the cool things about this gimmick is just the whole concept that it's a full routine and really a well put together sturdy gimmick. This is something that treated right is going to last a lifetime. But in addition to that, I really thought they went above and beyond the creation of the tutorial that goes along with this gimmick and routine. Yeah, I mean, dude, total total tutorial time was what, 22 minutes? Yeah, somewhere around Plus there. A 10 minute interview with Kaylin Morelli, which was pretty cool. I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't watch the whole thing. Um, but, you know, the tutorial side of it was perfect. Yeah, the way it was broken down into nine separate videos was perfect for me. I know that you prefer it be kind of sectioned out with time codes within the one video, which would work as well. I just liked, uh, you know, having the opportunity to pick out which video I wanted to watch. But I mean, the routine itself was six minutes long. That was the longest video that they had. Most of the other videos were three minutes, two minutes long. And for me, that was amazing. Absolutely agree. I think, you know, like you said, I, I would have been good with a time-coded video. Not to say I'd prefer it, but I think it was also a possibility. I think the way they cut it up, we've actually seen other producers do this in the past as well, though not as frequently. I thought it was nice if in the future you did just need to jump to something else. You forget how to account for an angle sensitivity or something along those lines and you want to make sure that you can just brush up on it real quick there is an opportunity to roll in and click a button and watch a three minute quick clip on it which i thought was very cool um the idea behind it though to me is one of the things that was a little bit broken up being outside of one video is the linear aspect of it you know you have the trailer the performance the explanation the the kind of routine itself to me a little bit of that could have probably on better sequentially listed versus in like a grid format and again that's a little bit nitpicking but i do think there were parts of it where did i want to watch the trailer and the full performance or did i just need to watch the trailer or just the full performance did i need to watch the routine before i watch the explanation things like that kind of stood out to me as the way they lined it up could have been a little bit better but the videos themselves were perfect quality Joe did a yeah. great job explaining not only the routine and the instruction, but how to overcome a lot of potential issues that may arise with this gimmick as well. One of the things that stood out to me with this, and they address it, which I think is really good, but there is an auditory aspect to this gimmick that while you're using it, if you're not aware of that auditory aspect, could give it away. You know, it's without going into too much detail, it's something that they address as part of the instruction, but it's also something that you definitely need to be aware of. And it's probably the one weak point of this gimmick, because otherwise this thing is just mind blowing. It really allows you to create an amazing effect based on the idea of this card passing through the phone. And as long as you account for those couple weaknesses that this have, one of them being the auditory issue, this is going to crush audiences. Oh, yeah. It's so easy. Definitely good for beginners all the way up to for professional. Um, you know, I was a little hesitant at first with the price tag at 50. Um, yeah. You know, I didn't know what to expect because it was 250 for a piece of metal. You know, but when I got it um, and had the chance to look at it, uh, you know, I, I understood, you know, that, like you said, the detail and um, it really is a 
pretty gimmick, which sounds kind of weird. Yeah, no, it really is a piece of art. And I think, you know, one of the things they could have done to make it cheaper would have been to have gone with something like aluminum instead of stainless steel. It would have probably brought the production value down. But at the same time, if you had gone with aluminum, there's a lot of longevity issues that could have come into play. There could have been pitting. There could have been discoloration. And it actually mentions in some of the ad copy for it that they decided to go stainless steel for the longevity of it. And I think it was a great move. It may have increased the price point pretty significantly, but this is something that you can carry with you at any point in time and use, whether it be in a street performance, an off-the-cuff performance at a party. You could even do this in parlor or even stage settings. I think there's a ton of possibility with it. And I know there's been a lot of real uh, interest in kind of metal phone-esque gimmicks, whether they be similar to this, whether it's a card or bill through the phone, or it be some sort of transformation of the phone into metal. But I think one big thing with all of those is going to always be that construction and longevity because it's something that if you're going to be carrying is going to be in your pocket. If you're bumping into things, if you put it in your pocket and sit down, you don't want the metal if it's something soft like aluminum to bend. So being stainless really is a smart move on this one. Yeah, and I like the fact that they used kind of a, a max size iPhone. Yeah. You know, that it's not a smaller version where it's, you know, basically going to run out in a year or two because they're stepping up the sizes in their phones. This is, you know, you're not going to get a much bigger phone moving forward than this, which, uh, you know, I was happy with. Absolutely. And so one of the cool things about this gimmick too, is it really comes with everything you need to perform the routine. So not only do you get the metal phone gimmick, you also get the silicone phone case with the slit in the back and you get the stickers that go on the metal phone as well to make it look more realistic, the camera stickers which is great because you don't have to worry about like missing parts or making your own parts or having to go out and buy a new iPhone that may or may not fit the gimmick. They give you everything you need, which I think is super important, especially at that price point. You know, if there was anything left up to you to go pick up at that price point, I would have said it would have been overpriced, but I think with the amount of just instruction and energy and creativity that went into this, 249 while high is really a reasonable price point for what you get for this. Yeah, and and if, you know, going down the road, if you do need to pick up more accessories, let's say, for the phone, sounds kind of cool. Um, you know, they do have that available on uh, Joe Miranda's website as well. So you, you never will run out of opportunity to. Absolutely, and I think that's great forethought on their part. You know, they really tried to build a gimmick that would last as long as possible, but the things that would wear out, they do have the possibility to pick up more. So while you're out picking up the gimmick, it may be worthwhile to pick up an extra couple cases or stickers so that over time, if the case wears out or the stickers peel, that's something you can really already have on hand so you're not out of the mix with that or, you know, however long it takes to get the replacements. I think the other aspect of it too, and like you mentioned earlier, the fact that they did the max size iPhone is really, I think, important because while you want this to look as realistic as possible, one of the things for me for phone gimmicks that's always a key point to consider is how long are phones gonna look like that? You know, we yeah. still sometimes see people trying to pull off iPhone 4 or 6 gimmicks, and at this point, you're just like, all right, that's indefinitely a gimmick. It's not a real phone because very few people still have an iPhone 4 or iPhone 6 even at this point. So with an, a max size iPhone and being relatively similar shape to the most recent model, you're getting something that unless iPhones drastically change in the next couple of years, size wise is still going to be relevant, which I think is really cool. Yeah, I oh, totally agree. Thanks everyone for checking out this episode of Reviewed. Make sure to check out Metal Phone on Joe Miranda's site. You'll find the link down in the description below. And while you're at it, make sure to like, share, and subscribe.